So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at creating an interactive storybook using Microsoft PowerPoint. Now the first thing we're going to do is we need to change the slide size. Now to do this we're going to click design at the top, slide size and custom slide size. That's then going to allow us to click the portrait option which is going to make it look a little bit more like a book. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new slide and this is where I'm going to start putting my book together. I'm going to delete everything that's currently sitting on the slide because I want to put all of my own content in. Now I've already started building the content so I'm just going to paste in what I already have. Now what I've got here are four extracts from chapter six of Holes and all I've done is I've put the text together just in a comic book type strip so I can combine it with different types of media. So the media could be images, videos or sound. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting everything that I want on the page before I start animating it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click insert pictures and I'm going to insert a picture of someone falling and I'm going to put that at the top. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the first paragraph and put in a picture that could potentially link to it. So it talks about Stanley having a pair of shoes. So all I'm going to do is insert another picture of a pair of shoes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste it. So I've got two shoes just so it looks like a pair and I'm going to put them next to each other. I'm then going to highlight them and I'm going to do something called grouping. Now the grouping will just mean that you can move them as one image. Now all of the images that I'm using in this video today I've got from the website or I've used the search engine Creative Commons. Now this allows you to search for images that people have put up that are, you're allowed to use to share and it says here that you can use them, modify, adapt them or build onto them. Now what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to completely now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in the final few images. So it talks about someone running or he ran. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another picture and I'm going to put in a cartoon picture of someone running. Now this is a GIF animation or a GIF image. Now what this means is that when the PowerPoint plays it should actually run. And I'm going to turn it around just so it's the other side. I'm then going to talk about the final, paragra final paragraphs. This one talks about a patrol car, so I'm going to insert a police car. Now the police car is facing the wrong way, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the picture above. And I'm then going to do the final one. Now for the final one, it talks about the pair of sneakers, these ones at the top, were stolen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of have them sitting on a table and I'm going to make it look like a robber's coming in to take them. So the first thing I'm going to introduce is I'm going to put in a table. I'm then just going to copy and paste this image. So I've got two. And I'm going to make it smaller just so they're sitting on the table. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a picture of a robber. But I'm going to leave the robber just over here to start with and I'll show you why. Now we've got all our content there, we need to actually start making it interactive. So we need to use the animations option at the top to make them come in from different sides. Now what I'm going to do to start with is I want holes to already be on the page. So I'm just going to start animating chapter 6 and the person falling. Now I'm going to click this button that says animation ping. Now what this animation pane will do is it will show you the order when you start animating things that everything is happening. It will also put a number next to them. So I will start then with animating the holes title. It's got a number one because it's the first thing. I'm then going to click on the second or the first image that I've put in and I'm going to use the option called fly in. Now currently, as you saw there, he came from the top. Because he's falling, I'm going to change the effect option so he comes from the top rather than the bottom. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to animate chapter 6. Now you can always test this at any point, you can click on slideshow, you can see holes, you can see the person falling and the chapter. Now because I haven't done anything with this, they already are on the page and you can see that this person's also animated. So I'm then going to start with my paragraphs. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to make them fly in from the left hand side. So I'm going to go fly in and I'm going to change the effect option from the left. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to do the same with the shoes. I'm going to have them fly in, but this time I'm going to have them flying in from the right hand side. 
And I'm just going to repeat this process for the first few things. So I'm going to have this next text flying in from the right. And because this person's running, I want him flying in from the right as well. So I'm going to fly in from the right. Now one thing you saw then is when he flew in, he actually came over the writing. Now I want him to come behind the writing. So I'm going to right click and center back. Now that means that he then is behind the writing. I've then got my police car. Now just to show you again, it comes over the writing. So I'm going to click center back so it then goes behind. And then I'm going to have it flying in. And I'm going to have it flying in from the left. Now this is where the animation pane comes in handy because you can see that I forgot to animate this one. So I can have this one flying in, I can have it flying in from the left, and then you can actually change the order by dragging it above. and You can see the numbers change. Now the final one, I'm going to first of all group this image as I grouped the ones before, so the table and the shoes move as one, and I'm then going to start animating it. So the first thing that I want to happen is I want the final piece of text. And I can have that flying in from the bottom because it's the bottom of the page. I've then got the shoes on the table. And I'm going to have them coming in from the left-hand side. And I've then got the robber. Now I'm going to have him sent to back. But what I'm going to do this time is rather than just having him come across, I'm going to use something called a motion path. Now a motion path will allow me to make him come in at whatever angle I want him to. Now to do this, I'm going to go on add, add animation, but I'm going to look at the motion path options here. Now I'm then going to click custom path, and this means that I can then click and I can draw the path that he takes. I'm then going to double click to finish my animation. Now what you did find there is he came in quite quick. So what I can do is I can change the timings at the top to make the animation last slightly longer. If I then go and I run through my animation, I've got the title and the chapter, and then my content starts coming in. Now again, some of these are flying in quite quickly. So what we could do is we could look at changing it so that they take slightly longer. We could also put some sounds onto it. So for example, when the police car comes in, we could add a sound to make it sound like a siren, or we could record ourselves speaking so it actually speaks through the writing.